Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we're going to be doing some 20 inch schedule 40 pipe rollout in the 1G position. We're going to use STT for the root and show you guys how we do that. But before we get started, bring it in closer. I want to talk to you guys about something personal. Do you have a dirty tip? Maybe a clogged nozzle? Maybe you got some gas flow issues, you know, you just can't talk about with your friends? Well, thanks to today's sponsor, Contesco Ceramic Anti-Spatter Spray. We can get you back in the game and get your tip running for an entire eight hour shift. All you have to do is spray this on your nozzle at the beginning of your shift and it'll last a full eight hour day. This stuff dries in seconds, it's gonna increase your productivity and decrease your consumable costs. If you want more information on this product, click the link in the description below. All right, so let's go set the machine up. All right, so let's get this beast dialed in. Today we're gonna be using a Lincoln Electric Powerway 455 using STT. So for those of you that don't know, STT is surface tension transfer, and it's specifically designed for open root pipe welding. It's gonna increase uh, travel speeds two times faster than standard SMAW or stick welding, and four times faster than typical GMAW short circuit welding. What this stuff does is it makes up for that lack of fusion or lack of penetration you commonly experience with gas metal arc welding or MIG, and it also prevents those little whiskers you get on the inside of the pipes. Uh, we're gonna use 7525 gas and about 30 CFH, 165 inches per minute on the wire feed speed, and I have a trim value set to one. Now, if I increase that, uh, that trim value, what that's gonna do, that's gonna give me a little bit more energy, cause a more fluid puddle. Uh, if I find that um, you know, I need to run a little bit faster, I might turn that up. If uh, I turn that trim value down, you know, go below 1.0, uh, what that's going to do, that's going to stiffen that puddle up a little bit. It's going to decrease some of that arc voltage and stiffen that puddle up to where it's a little bit drier. So first what we're going to do is we're going to run a trim value of 1 and show you what that does. And then what we're going to do is we're going to max out the trim value by 10 and then we'll decrease it by 10 and show you guys the difference. So we're going to run three different types of routes uh, and show you guys the, the difference between the trim values. All right, so on this machine I have the option of selecting a two-step or a four-step trigger. So what I'm going to do... I'm personally going to select the four step and I'm going to show you guys why. In a two step application, what typically happens is if I pull the trigger, the wire runs. If I let go of the trigger, it stops. In a four step application, if I pull the trigger and let it go, it's going to continuously feed wire and then I'm going to turn that off. Okay, just like a light switch on, off. What that's going to allow me to do is not get hand fatigue. So I see a lot of my students in the past. We'd get into MIG welding on, you know, long applications and stuff. Basically what happens is you guys are squeezing this thing like it owes you money, right? Just relax, right? Just put it on four step. If you've got a long run, put it on four step, hit that trigger, let it go, and just kind of, you know, relax when you hold this thing. You don't want to be squeezing it because that's going to cause involuntary motion up here. Uh, it's going to cause fatigue in your arm, especially if you're doing this 8, 10, 12 hours a day. You know, just go in there nice and relaxed kind of have a, a decent grip on it, but I mean, you don't need to strangle this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and use that four step application and run it all the way through on the pipe. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here in the center of my tack. Man cub over here is gonna control the rotator. Now, if you don't have a man cub, you can use a foot pedal, but I mean, we gotta justify keeping them around here, so we're trying to keep them busy. So man cub's gonna control that aspect of it for me. We're gonna communicate back and forth, faster, slower, however, whatever the case may be, whatever's needed. I'm going to start at the two o'clock position and I'm going to point slightly upward at the puddle. We also have a cam uh, camera on the inside of the pipe, so you guys are going to be able to see what's going on on the back side. I won't be able to, to see that. I'm just going to have to go by sight up top and sound just by listening uh, to the side of the pipe. Uh, remember, I have that four stage trigger on there, which is essentially a trigger lock, so about two seconds into the weld, I'll go ahead and let go of that trigger. It's going to continuously run until I squeeze it again. Uh, now, for those of you that are wondering what this piece is over here, this is not a workpiece clamp. This is on uh, pretty much all of your external wire feeders. This is going to send feedback to that external wire feeder and let it know, uh, you know the, the amount of amps and volts that's occurring there because this is a constant voltage process. The machine has to regulate itself to maintain a nearly constant voltage. That's how it gets its information. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. All right, so everything looks pretty good. Um, I wanted to maintain that flush to eighth inch root reinforcement, and that's what we have in here. 
We're going to go ahead and set the machine. We're going to give it a 1.10 on the trim. We're going to run that. What I anticipate happening is a, a soupy puddle, maybe some excessive penetration going on there, but we're going to find out. Once we get done running that, we'll go ahead and drop it down to a 0.90 and just kind of show you what happens when you go above and below that kind of that one preset value for trim. All right, so we're at a 1.10 on the trim value now. As you can see, the puddle is a lot more fluid than the previous pass. Um, keyholes opening up a lot wider, you know, especially with this knife edge on there, it's harder to control. Uh, process is recommended to have a knife edge in the preparation, so I think we can, we can fix this by dropping our trim value back down. Crash, that didn't work out too good. Um, Kind of just like I anticipated with the uh, the 1.10 trim value, it's too hot. I got excessive penetration there. Uh, it's more than an eighth of an inch, which you know, that's kind of what I anticipated. But I'm not happy with it, uh, and it was too hot. I mean, keyholing was kind of uncontrollable. Uh, I was yelling a man cub, you know, kind of speed up and stuff. It still wasn't helping. Uh, the the puddle was just too fluid. So I think uh, when we drop it down to 0.90, I think we're going to get better results. I'm kind of anticipating that. Uh, that may be almost too cold or too thick of a puddle. Um, so we'll go ahead and give that a shot next. Go ahead and roll it, Mike. All right, so the, uh, the .90 trim value kind of surprised me a little bit. It was a stiffer puddle, but um, I got pretty good penetration in there. I mean, everything's flush to an eighth of an inch which is what I was looking for. I mean, the, the puddle did feel a little bit stiffer. Uh, I didn't think it was gonna penetrate enough to, uh, to get the desired results, but uh, it kind of proved me wrong. So it actually turned out, you know, as good, if not maybe a little bit better than the, uh, the trim value of one. So I, I think um, maybe we'll drop it to, or, or run it up to 0.95 and kind of see if that's a happy medium between the 1.0 and the 0.90 and uh, see if that works for us. All right, so now we're running the .95 on the trim. Uh, it seems to be running really good. I, I like this better than the one one value. Uh, pretty good puddle. Uh, it's not keyholing excessively. It's doing really good on that zero land, uh, tying in well. Uh, I think the penetration on this should be pretty decent, so we'll go ahead and check that out. All right, so overall, you know, I think I like that better than the uh, the trim value of one. That uh, .95 laid in there pretty good. Didn't get any excessive keyholing. Uh, penetration profile looks good. I do have some of this lovely schmegma in there from when we were running that 1.10 and it got too hot in there. Uh, other than that, I mean, uh, that's STT, folks. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys learned something. I know I did. Uh, make sure to check out our new segment of helpmeweld.com after this video. And until next time, make every weld better than your last. Welcome back to another segment of HelpMeWeld.com. Today, Kenny Martinez96 on Instagram is looking for some helpful criticism uh, and some ways to improve on his weld. So it looks like he's got some 095 wall, inch and a half diameter tubing, uh, quarter inch by two inch squared tubing. He's using the gas tungsten arc welding process, or TIG for short, running 90 amps, 70S6 filler wire, 1 16th diameter, uh, 332 tungsten that is 2% thoriated. Uh, first, I got to say thanks for all the information. That's a lot of good information right there as far as your parameters. Um, first thing I would say is your puddle. Uh, it looks like you do have some undercut in there, not to be a sofa CWI or anything like that, uh, but you even mentioned it in your, your comments as well here. One thing you could do is, is either speed up or add more filler metal. So there's three ways to control your puddle. Uh, you've got your foot pedal with your amps. Travel speed can also affect the heat of your puddle. So the faster you go, the a little bit cooler your, your puddle is going to be. And your filler metal. So think about you know chucking ice cubes in a glass of water. You take that filler metal, as you're dipping it into that puddle, you're cooling that puddle down, right? So that's essentially that's all it looks like the problem here is you either have to speed up just a little bit or add some more filler metal, and that way it, that weld won't wash out as much on you. Uh, well, I hope that helps out. Uh, if you have any other questions, go ahead and just throw a comment in there. You can tag me in there, at Redbeard Welds or at weld.com in there. We'll be more than happy to give you some additional pointers and tips uh, to keep us posted on your progress, man. We really appreciate your help and support. 
Um, until next time, make every well better than your last.